back to another video. If it's your first time here, welcome. Uh, my name is Hannah and I am a veterinary tech assist and I am in Penn Foster. I want to try to give as much guidance with Penn Foster as I can because I know it can be difficult to go to school online while doing whatever it is you are doing in life and so because i'm a pen foster student and because i am a successful pen foster student i am a good tech assist and i do have a lot of skill when it comes to veterinary medicine i feel like i can talk about my successes and my story a little bit more so if you guys are interested in it stay tuned but basically what i wanted to talk about today was my first externship and my advice to people going to do the externship or if you guys don't know what it looks like i hope i can give you a better idea if you guys want to stay tuned for more content pen foster related just let me know in the comments below but you can go ahead and subscribe so that you can and, um, keep up with my content and um, my soon to be um, more pen foster videos coming out. So without further ado, we can go ahead and get into it. If you don't know, um, Pen Foster is an online program. It is accredited, which means that if you do go to school through this program and you finish it, you will be able to sit for the um, National Veterinary Technician Examination. If you're wondering, is it real? Um, does it actually work? The answer is yes. I will say that Pen Foster is different from typical schools and so it's not a brick and mortar college which um, brick and mortar colleges are like public schools essentially um, Penn Foster works a little bit differently it is self-paced meaning that when you sign up for one semester you have a year to finish it you can get um, extensions if you need to but they cost more money and the externships are a limited amount of time and so I believe externship one is 12 weeks. You have 12 weeks to finish everything. The externship two, I believe you have 16 weeks or 18 weeks to finish everything, but there is a substantial difference between the two of them. And so I have not been through um, externship two. I hope to do like a vlogging process when I go through it because I hope to go through it in April. So I can cover that when I get to it and I am going to be coming out with a video about how I'm prepping for that and how I'm prepping for the National Veterinary Technician Examination and study techniques and all that good stuff later. But I have been getting a lot of requests about how I went through externship one, what kind of journey I had with it, and what I would recommend to students who are about to start it or who are unsure if they want to do pen foster. Um, so I just wanted to kind of get into that. I'll go ahead and do a separate video about pros and cons of pen foster and how to taper it to you because I have some ideas based off of my personal experiences and experiences I've heard of other people uh, or heard from other people about their difficulties with it. So I will get into that later. But um, the first thing I want to say is that I would recommend trying to start looking for your externship site ahead of time. I don't I, I can't give you a lot of advice about finding an externship site right now at this time just because the place that I did my first externship at, I was able to complete all the skills in one practice and it was the practice that I was working as a tech assist at at the time. So I didn't really have a lot of difficulty finding a place to um, get those things done. I will say that I had to have a, a DVM sign off on my skills instead of a LVT, RVT, CVT um, because we did not have a RVT at the time that had gone through a accredited college. In California, you can get what they call grandfathered in, which means that you basically cram for the state test and you are able to sit for the state test if you have a certain amount of time as being a tech assist you're working in the field under your belt but you can't sit for the national veterinary technician exam and you are limited to specific places if you want to stay a 
or um, licensed, registered, whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> so um, for Penn Foster, you do have to have someone who went through a AVMA accredited school in order to have them be your supervisor. Supervisor meaning that they are the ones watching you do specific skills and saying, yes, they're competent in doing this or um, you need to work on it you can do A, B, C, and D. So basically they're like your on-site advisors. And so having a veterinarian do it was difficult, but I can get into that later. So the first one I was saying is, like I said, start looking early. So trying to come up with a timeline as to when you want to get it done and trying to stick to that as best as possible. I know it's difficult because of self-paced, so you don't have a hard timeline for these people but trying to just reach out to people shadow them and just offer you know your services like I'm willing to you know not get paid for this I'm willing to help out with all of these things and learn how to do these things but volunteer my hours essentially I would also recommend if you're at the beginning of the program and you haven't worked in a veterinary field I would tell you to even try to work part-time as a receptionist, as a hospital aide, like try to get your foot in the door because it's really hard if you're waiting to do your externship to get a site. So if you start making connections ahead of time, not only are you going to learn more just by being in that environment, but it's going to be a lot easier for you down the road when you are stressed out about the externship. So it's one less thing for you to stress about. So I would definitely recommend that. Number two is that I would highly recommend trying to get a technician to be your person to sign off on things. When I had the DVM sign off on things, it was just difficult because I didn't have a lot of guidance and granted this veterinarian was amazing and I'm very grateful that she was able to help me with this experience but there are a lot of things that I didn't really have help with and so it was basically just me like going through all of this by myself and it was frustrating for me because at the time the hospital I was working at, um, some of the people who were also in school were just teasing me and because I had to, you know, make a lot of videos, just frustrating for me to try to get all those things done and it felt like I didn't have a support group. So trying to build that support group, trying to get a veterinary technician to be your person so that they can teach you and they can help you because chances are, you know, they might not have gone to that program that you're in. They have probably experienced something similar. So um, just trying to find somebody who can kind of be your helper through all of this is pretty key to try to make it go as smoothly as possible. Number three would be prepare ahead of time. So one of the things that set me pretty far back was that I assumed it was going to take a couple weeks for my externship site to get approved. It took like two days. And so I honestly procrastinated and I was like, oh yeah, like I have two weeks, it's fine. I'm going to take a break. I just finished my semester. Like. I'm on top of it, I'm fine, I've got time to kick back. And then when it started and I got the notice, because you get an email saying like, your externship start date is today. And so I was like, oh, oh, okay, I am in big trouble. And so that really, that really hit me. And so I wasn't prepared, I didn't have, I didn't, I, I hadn't thought of how to structure it, how to break up the skills, like I didn't really put much effort into that before then. So looking at it ahead of time and trying to figure out how you're going to structure it is going to be key. The next thing I would recommend is trying to break it up week by week. What I ended up doing was I took all the skills and I basically separated them into the more difficult ones I thought I would have a harder time getting to. Like one of them was um, doing an enema. That one I pushed until the end because we didn't see very many animals who needed enemas. So I knew that one might take me more time. And so I pushed that one towards the end of my time allowance. And then I kind of broke them up as 
like the ones that required videos and the ones that required essays that I needed to write and the ones that were going to take me more time like one of them I believe I had to write an essay about shock or I had to write about like the symptoms of shock and how they present and things like that that you have to write so those things that take you a lot more time you would want to put with a skill that was like you have to perform like six nail trims and write essentially a um, essay or a couple paragraphs about how you would explain to somebody who's never done it before or explain to a client how to do a nail trim. And so, you know, I, I already knew how to do nail trims and I already had the sources. I was going to use my textbook as a APA site for that essay. And so I put the, you know, I would put the nail trim one with a harder skill that I'd have to work more on. And so try to break them up like that. That way it's like the same amount of effort you're putting into it throughout the weeks as opposed to having a couple of really easy um, skills that you finish all at once and then having like four really difficult ones that are gonna need like five page explanations each and so breaking it up that way makes it so that you don't burn out and it also allows you a little bit more time to work on the harder um, skills as opposed to just doing all the harder skills all at once. The other thing I would recommend is bring your skills around with you. I had a binder that I was carrying those skills around on so I had a pile or like a in, in my folder I had all of my finished skills on one side and then all of my to be finished skills on the other side and so I broke them up by week and I separated them that way and I would write down the specific requirements that I had to get done on there. I would also reference there's a website that has a lot of help for the externship on there and I believe it's in your if you're going through the externship or about to go through it it's in your dashboard and I believe it's in that module where it'll say like study guide help or something like that and it'll take you to a site where it has all the skills and each thing that's required on each one of the skills. And the way it's written out on that website, it's through Penn Foster, so Penn Foster made it, but it's more of like a supplemental help for the externship. And I don't know how many times I visited that. It was several times per skill. It is so key to having a smoother externship and trying to lessen the amount of stress you go through for that and it really helped. There were some times where I would read things on there that I hadn't caught on the externship skills sheet that were requirements for that skill so I felt like I had a good comprehensive knowledge of what was required of me for each skill so that was really great. There was one skill that you had to do 10 vital checks essentially. I wouldn't call them TPRs because you had to do a lot more than that. You had to listen to the heart and make sure there was no murmurs and also make sure that it was synchronous with the pulses and there wasn't a pulse deficit and you had to also check their dehydration level and so it was more in depth. It was basically like a brief physical exam as opposed to just a TPR and one of the skills you had to do like 10 of those or something and so I made an Excel spreadsheet on the patient's names and all of the, the requirements because they required you to write it in a particular format. And so I printed out that Excel spreadsheet and I brought it to work and I would write all that stuff down. And then later on when I was off the clock, I would print out those records because you have to submit records for certain things. So I would print out those records and then cross out the patient's or the client's information and everything and submit them like that. That was an easier way where I could like write everything down and it was organized so I could go back and just type all that stuff in. But it wasn't too hard for me to write that down through my shift. So that was really great. I would utilize like spreadsheets or making charts like that for as many skills as you can, especially the ones that they ask you for proof in the patient's chart. I would definitely recommend having like a book that you carry around at work uh, or at your externship site because that really helped me stay organized. And keep in mind, I, I learned all this stuff like on the fly. <laughs> I didn't have a lot of guidance 
from other students and I was just kind of learning as I was going and I'm that type of person anyways I, I ask for help when I need it but I kind of want to learn that way so I hope that all of this information is helpful to you overall I did pass I passed on the first try and I didn't need any of the extra time because if you submit a skill once and it's declined for whatever reason and you have to resubmit it a second time you get an extra like four weeks or something to submit those so I would recommend if you submit four skills for the week one of your skills gets declined I wouldn't worry about it then I would just keep going on the schedule that you made because at the end of the time period you have an extra like four weeks or an extra two weeks or something to get those things done so I waited until then like until I was done with everything I needed to worry about those other skills because that's extra time that you already get set aside for those so there's no point in doing that and then pushing back your skills that you haven't already submitted that are still due at the end of that 12 weeks as opposed to that 14 week mark um, if that makes sense. I think I used a couple days of that to turn in a second round uh, or like a second pass of a skill but otherwise it was pretty smooth. The first couple weeks like I said were pretty difficult just because I was still getting my footing and a lot of the things I was working on I had put the easier skills at the beginning of the externship. The things that I knew I was good at like nail trims, ear cleaning, I think I had to explain how to do like ear medications, like things like that. I was like, oh I've got this in the bag, like it's fine. And so I was working on all those things simultaneously. So for the first two weeks I didn't turn any skills in. So my instructor was like, hey how are you doing? Like do you need help? I haven't heard from you, like you haven't turned anything in. And they recommend doing three a week I believe. I kept having to reach out to her and be like working on them I promise like I'm gonna turn some in like don't worry and so then after that point I was doing them regularly but the first couple weeks I was prepared and so I was still working up to everything and I was also just working on all those essays so I didn't have anything to turn in at the moment but then it was like oh I turned in five things on one day so it um, ended up working decently in the end I am preparing a little bit more um, for my second externship and I can talk about that more in a separate video about how I'm preparing for it. I um, mentioned earlier that I was going to do a how to taper pen posters learning style to you and I'm excited for that one because I am a pen poster um, student ambassador and I've recommended pen poster to a lot of different people and some people it works well for, some people it doesn't. It honestly overall has worked really well for me. I did have to get a extension for my third semester but I am in semester four now and I'm in radiology. I'm about halfway through radiology so I am trucking on through but if you want to see more Penn Foster related videos please stay tuned. Like I said before I'm going to be trying to post at least once a week or once every other week to try to stay consistent with all of my posting and everything. So if there's any Penn Foster content that you really want to see just let me know. Um, but overall I really do love this program and if you have any questions about it that you want to reach out to me privately about please feel free to do so. Um, my Instagram will be linked down below and you can just message me there or if you want to comment on here that's totally fine too. It's totally up to you. If you guys um, really like this video you can go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you can see some more content. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you so much for watching. Mm -hmm.